Welcome to the Boiling Point, Richie Ware, Stephen Taylor, Director of our Rental Division. We actually are out in a mobile de-aerator system that we're building right now, and it's kind of good to get back out into the trailer. We haven't been yeah. out here in a while, so I uh, wanted to talk a little bit because I think there's some good things that we can actually um, go over on sizing and really talk about the DA mobile system um, and, and just how it works. So first of all, we're standing in front of our uh, water softener. Why don't we start from there, how big the yep. DA is in, in the water softener? Yeah, this entire system is sized to feed an 82,000 pound per hour unit. Um, so in order to do that and get it in this 53 foot trailer, we have to use a triplex system, meaning we've got three resin tanks and two of those are running at one time. The other one is in regeneration, meaning it's got salt water coming back through it, regenerating to, to get it ready to, to go back online again. And you're doing three because of room. Because of room, if we do two tanks, they're so big and tall we can't get them in the trailer. So okay. we had to go with three in order to get those small enough to get them in here. And you can see they're still pretty good size. It's still yeah. pretty good chunk of equipment. Okay. Another thing we're, we, we've uh, learned over time, again, through trial and error, being in the rental business, is all this stuff is running copper. We, we've run, we, you know, initially this all came out with galvanized steel. Galvanized was everything used for in soft water. Soft water is really, really aggressive, so it eats steel up big time. Um, but we found over the years that, that that galvanized pipe didn't hold up either. Same thing with the tanks. Those tanks are now fiberglass tanks. They used to be galvanized. After about five or six years, you start developing holes through the side of them. So we've, again, evolved over the time. And, and now these things are, you know, that copper pipe, it's never going to fill up with stuff. You're not going to wear it out. The, the fiberglass tanks, unless somebody freezes everything up and busts it, which they do. Happens. Um, it happens, but these things really hold up well. They do a great job for us. Okay. So actual sizing for the um, de-aerator itself, what type of calculations are you using? Uh, we're using the, the flow for the boiler plus about 50% so we can take care of surges that come in. So like a, um, an 80,000 pound per hour boiler is going to evaporate 160 gallons a minute in water. So we'll put this thing size for 240 gallons a minute. That way we've got room for surges when, when the DA calls for water. It's not going to be just what the boiler needs, it's going to be what the, what the uh, DA system will flow. So we can get, we've got extra capacity there. So we, we oversize everything, just part of what we do in the, in the business. Okay. And what we got on the these on electronic here. heads, you know, the, the old aquamatic systems had individual valves all over the things. They, they'd have half a dozen valves on each tank, and they were really, really hard to, to troubleshoot. And multiple valves, then you have multiple diaphragms and multiple problems to have down the road. These uh, single uh, valves are <laughs> multi port, but a single valve. These things are so much simpler. It's all electronic. You can sit here and program it. You can see what the, the flow is. You can see how many gallons this went through, how many, how many more to go before it goes through re regeneration. It's a whole different technology, and they, they do a really good job. They're reliable. They take the pounding one up and down the road. Uh, you can see that we put um, rubber behind all of these. Uh, clamps that we have on here so that, that, that it, it lim that's a you know, vibration eliminator is what they mm -hmm, amount to. Mm -hmm. um, just everything we've done in here makes these things really, really reliable and do a great job for us for the customer. Okay, and if you'd like to see a water softener video, I know uh, Steve Duvall and I actually did one did. on the water softener and so you could check that out in the boiling point. Why don't we go around back, check out the pumps. We're in the back of this 53 foot trailer and we can actually talk a little bit about um, the, the pumps and talk a little bit about what they do. So why don't you go ahead yep. and go. So coming out of the water softener, uh, we go through a uh, mod V valve that, that we build ourselves here in-house. Uh, that's controlling the water level in the, in the deaerator itself. And then when we come through the deaerator, because we've got a steam PRV valve, pressure reducing valve to, to put pegging steam into the DA system. That helps to, uh, it eliminates the oxygen that that water softener is generating. It, that water softener, when, it, when you take all the minerals out of the water, you leave a lot of oxygen, really high oxygen content, extremely uh, aggressive, very corrosive. That steam in that D8 gets rid of that. So when you come out of that, then when you come into our pump system, and we, we design these things, we want to always have a backup system. So we've got a, a primary pump, and then if something happens with this system, we've got a backup. Well, you know, we, we can't get the DA tank up high enough to get enough head pressure on this tank, on this pump. So we've had lots of issues with these pumps failing over the years. And what we've had to do, 
we've had to put a booster pump in. So we take this pump and it doesn't require very little head pressure, almost none to that pump because it, it's a um, high volume, low pressure pump. So we, we take it and we've got it set to produce 20 PSI. So that 20 PSI coming into this pump, then this pump never sees that low head pressure coming into it. So it's very reliable, it does a, does a great job for us. Uh, again, we've got, got two pumps, got block valves, strainers, check valves, uh, the, the whole system here. Uh, another thing we did, because we, we never know what pressure the boiler's going to be operating at, so this pump has to be sized to operate at a boiler running 335 PSI or 75 PSI. The pump doesn't like that. It's got a curve. It wants to run wide open and get after it. So when we're running low pressure, it'll pull the water apart and cavitate. We fix that with the variable speed drive. Mm -hmm. So then we set the discharge pressure where we want it. The variable speed drive is reading that pressure and it runs the pump speed just to give us the pressure that, that's required and does a, a really, really good job for us. Uh, another thing we had trouble with, th this is a new design or a old design. We had the pumps in the middle of the trailer and that's not something you take off and cradle under your arm and walk <laughs> out of the trailer with. So when, when one has to be serviced, it was a huge problem. We sure. cut a hole in the trailer, drop a crane down, just cause all kinds of problems. So this one, we designed a, a trolley system mm. so that they can come in here with a come along hook to it, run it out to the back, set it down in a, you know, in a pickup truck or wherever you need to. Right. Uh, just again, just something else as we've evolved, we've, we've had to come up with new designs to make these things serviceable and make them reliable for the customer. Why, why two pumps? Again, one's, one's primary, and if uh -huh. something happens to this system, then yep. the second pump is put online while yep. this one's being serviced. Okay. That way the system is online feeding the boiler all the time, so one pump doesn't take the whole system down. Now, typical systems are not like this. You do have mm -hmm. DAs that are up in the air, and yeah. so that gi that's giving you the pressure that you need. Giving the head need, pressure the head that you need pressure. for the pump, so you don't need this, this booster so, pump. So really, the booster pump is what's helping us when we it put is. these in a trailer, flat, mm -hmm. and whatever it is. It makes that, them reliable. Okay. Yep. And it makes them reliable and then keeps us from, from tearing these pumps up by running low pressure all the time. The temperature of the DA? 225, 227. Typically, that's where it's going to run. Mm -hmm. um, we typically, because of the low head on that uh, uh, tank, we'll have to run about 8 to 10 pounds in order to get that kind of pressure with the flow we're running through it. So okay. A little higher pressure than normal, but that's, that's where they run. All right. Great system, man. Again, yep. guys designed these and uh, very... Uh, Honored to be able to have these guys here to be able to put these things together. If you'd like to see the deaerating video that, uh, you know, maybe uh, talk a little bit about the deaerators that you and I did, yep. you can go out to Bowling Point and actually see that as well and you find out a little bit about what does a deaerator do. Yep. Well, we'll see you next time on the Bowling Point. Appreciate Stephen hanging out with us talking about the mobile deaerator. Now, remember, you can go out to our YouTube channel, check all of the Boiling Points out, several that I referenced. One that I didn't reference is the feed water modulating uh, uh, valve that we have, the Wear Mod V. Make sure you check that video out as well. Well, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you don't mind, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And as always, share a video. And one other thing, check out Steam Culture as Brent comes every Friday. Make sure you check him out. We'll see you next time on The Boiling Point.